What's up guys? I'm gonna shoot this video here and show you the importance of thinking ahead when you do your builds. Now, all of my components could switch out in the field very easily by using these like JIC fittings. Um, I don't use stainless on anything that's not being touched by bleach because they're cheap. They're like five bucks for these. I can swap them out every now and then. But if you notice, what we're doing here today is we're actually flushing the burner out. Look how nasty that is. I noticed a little bit of rust coming out when I was spraying, so it's time to flush it. Now, if you notice here, by the quick disconnect on the discharge hose, that there I don't have it because I can spin this off. When I remove this JIC here, so I have an Exxon loader on the truck. We can swap that out real quick. Also the float switch. The float switch on these are magnetic and every now and then you get a bunch of crud on the end of the magnet and they will not shut off or turn on. Um, and instead of pulling apart and cleaning it sometimes, um, I just swap it out. Now also if you notice, there's a quick disconnect right there on my float switch. I also installed that as well. So I'm not taking apart the burner box to replace the float switch. I take these automotive switch connectors, these weather pack ones, and I put them on a lot of my electronics that you have to swap out. All right? So if you notice here, I removed it from here. I have a fitting to a, to a half inch hose that comes around into the bucket. Now, the finished Thompson pump I use for everything, it works real great, comes here and then here's the whip that comes out of my burner. Now, we always wanna flush it reverse. So all I have to do is just take a ball valve, a cam lock, remember I have this on the end of the hose all the time and I just have this little adapter, plugs right in and I can, flush, I can start flushing this thing out in 10 minutes. All they do, is just remove that JIC, put the hose in, pop this in. You know, we all have our 55 gallon jumps of muriatic on hand, right? So I put 10 gallons of water in there, two gallons of muriatic acid, and let it run for an hour or so. And you know, this is what you get. I mean, it's just nasty. But the importance of thinking ahead, building things that you could quickly change, maintenance, is very important in this business and this should be done i mean with all the hard water that we have around here i don't even use the water at my shop i actually have a rainwater harvesting system outside that holds over a thousand gallons that i built just because the water in here is so hard everything the hot water heater the toilets get crusty and you can only imagine what it's doing to the inside of this burner here all right guys so there's a little tip here flushing your your burner thinking ahead building in systems where you can swap things out. Also, you can maintenance things on the fly without too much too much problems. You said, you know, and here's my system here. Here's for one machine, here's the other machine. I shut this valve off here, turn this valve off, and that goes to my downstream injector to another whip. Love the whips. Instead of going with your hose right into something hard, when you let off the gun, these things jump and they do break off the uh, break off. And of course, you know, if I want to use a hose reel, I just hook these jumpers into it. Hear that or just strip it off and put it right on. All right, but this is how I flush my hot water heater, my burner, real easy. Within a couple of minutes, do it. Because if you don't make it easy, you're not going to do it. All right, guys, hope this helps you out. Keep on spraying.